The topic of realism in video games has been a controversial one for years now, with games like Six Days in Fallujah being boycotted, cancelled, revived, and just marred with controversy. Ready or not, wanting to depict SWAT officers responding to a school shooting level, which led to websites like Kotaku basically making articles condemning the dev team, mods for Operation Harsh Doorstop bringing in things like Russian and Ukrainian forces, being asked if it's too soon, and wondering if it goes too far too quickly. Now, I just got wind of another tactical FPS that's being developed by a team in Kiev, Ukraine, and even though it's still early days, it's actually looking pretty good. I have all the details here, including an unsuccessful Kickstarter project, some early game info, and more. So leave a like on the video and subscribe for everything FPS related. My name is Big Fry, and let's get into it. Now before we get into the details, I do have to let you guys know about this month's BenQ giveaway. Click the link down below to enter for a chance to win an EX270 to 27 inch 240Hz monitor from BenQ Mobius. They've been a huge supporter of the channel and every month we have been giving away monitors from their incredible lineup. With features like HDRI that automatically adjust colors and detail, creating the clearest picture, color, and shadow depths, BenQ and their Mobius lineup are the best monitors you can get for series. Serious PC gaming. I've been a fan of them since I first started gaming on PC and I'm super psyched to be partnering with them now. Click the link down below, enter the giveaway and check out their entire lineup. And if you're in the market for a new monitor, I urge you look into BenQ. Let's get back to Glory to the Heroes. So it's a single player and multiplayer military tactical FPS set within the Russian and Ukrainian war. Let's start with the single player immersive story campaign. According to their Steam page, in the story you will find what they call war stories. So you have episodes about specific people, each of whom has their unique skills and who has been participating participating in specific historical events of the war. And while the war continues, these stories are personal ones. They're about people and not battles. Now, I'd imagine that this is something similar to what Battlefield did with their war stories and their single player campaign in Battlefield 1, which is pretty cool and it gives the players who might not want to dive into the multiplayer side of things, at least it gives you a chance to enjoy the title. But where I think this game is going to really appeal to the player base and where I think the devs are actually putting a lot of their focus into is the multiplayer. Split into multiple squads of eight each with a commander overseeing the battle, players must choose tactics alongside other squads while battling invader strongholds on large open maps to succeed in the brutal and heroic scale of the Ukrainian front. Tactics and squad cooperation are the only way to defeat occupational forces. Now in the game you're able to choose your class and your faction where you can fight as Ukrainian defenders or foreign volunteers. Each formation has its own gear, its own vehicles, offering a variety of experiences to choose from. You can serve as a gunner, a medic, an anti-tank, a sniper, artillery gunner, or any other unit with your own gear. So while they have classes, it sounds like you're also able to just customize your character and play kind of how you want to play. There is character customization and weapon tuning that allows you to make your character look as you wish as well, with things like different patches, clothes, armor, and more. You can tune your weapons with different scopes, grips, suppressors to create the build that you want. And according to the Steam page, there's over 60 different rifles, pistols, machine guns, SMGs, AA, and AT guns. There's also a variety of ground and air vehicles used in the war, so mechanized warfare is definitely on the table as well. The gameplay you guys are seeing is from their YouTube channel, and honestly, it does look pretty early, and at this point, I'm okay with it. They went to Kickstarter last year, and after 30 days, the project never reached their goal of around 72000 Canadian dollars, which honestly isn't a lot to develop a game of this magnitude, but it is a small team. I hadn't even heard about this game, so I think a big problem they have is obviously their marketing, with only 92 backers jumping onto the project and bringing in around $15,000. I'm not one to shy away from realistic settings in video games, especially something as fresh as the Russian-Ukraine war, which is still ongoing, but I'm curious to see if the fake outrage machines start to wind up with this game like they did with Six Days in Fallujah. I mean, if depicting the Battle of Fallujah is too soon, this is a game about a war that is still happening right now. Or will it be brushed to the side because the developers are Ukrainian? I don't know. 
All I know is this game is actually shaping up pretty well, and it's unfortunate that their Kickstarter wasn't successful because I'd like to see this game come to fruition. Their Kickstarter shows off some clips of jet dog fights, soldiers walking through a forest on fire during what looks like the aftermath of a tank battle, and honestly, it's, it's looking pretty good. The effects and the visuals are pretty dope. I'm pretty sure they're using a multiplayer FPS kit. The, the HUD and the UI looks very similar to other games that I've seen, but this actually looks like it's pretty well put together. I'm curious how the developers plan to balance the Russian side in the multiplayer setting without being biased against the Russians for obvious reasons. This is one game that I'm actually very curious to see through and see how the developers handle not only the scrutiny, but like I said, the balancing and, and how they just develop it further. If you guys like what you see, click the link to their Steam page down below and wishlist the game. Check out the screenshots and the dev updates and get connected. And while you're down there, leave a like on the video and subscribe for everything FPS related. And let me know what you think of Glory to the Heroes. Does this game appeal to you or will it be another in a long list of empty multiplayer first person shooters? Let me know down below. As always, my name is Big Fry. Join the BenQ giveaway by clicking the link down below in the description and the top pinned comment, and I'll see you on the next one.